Hi everyone, it's Jill from ThisOldGal.com. Today in the kitchen with Jill, I'm going to show you how to make a super easy dump and push start recipe. My good friend Suzanne gave me this recipe for a balsamic ginger chicken a couple of years ago. Suzanne made it in her oven and I thought I will try it in the pressure cooker. We've been making it in the pressure cooker ever since. It's incredible. It's very, very, very flavorful. Lots of ginger, lots of garlic. And all you do is mix up a marinade, put it in the refrigerator, and then cook it. And that's it. So let's get our marinade ready. The first thing you're going to do is take some ginger and fresh garlic. It's going to turn out to be about two tablespoons of each. And we're going to mince that. I like to use my little mini food chopper because it's just quicker. You can, you can cut it with a knife or you can even buy chop it up. You can even buy already minced ginger in the uh, grocery store and, and uh, garlic as well. All right, so we've minced that up. Put that over here. I'm going to grab my chicken that I put in a bag. I have about eight thighs between about two and a half pounds of chicken. All right, so we're going to take the top off of this and we're going to dump the garlic right into the bag of chicken. Just dump it right in. All right, now we're going to add in two teaspoons of kosher salt. There's one and there's two. And we're going to add in about a half a tablespoon of, I'm sorry, a half a teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. Just put that right into the bag. I like to use it freshly ground, but if you have it already ground up, just add it in. You know, this is such an easy recipe. You really just want to use whatever you have on hand and don't do anything special. All right, so we've got the pepper in. All right, now we want to add in three tablespoons of a spicy brown mustard. And we're not even going to mix it up and then pour it in. We're just going to put everything right into the bag. All right, so now let's do three tablespoons of mustard. All right. Okay, there's one two, and three. All right. Okay. Now we're going to do a quarter cup or four tablespoons of honey. So just measure it right into a measuring cup. Or once you get good at this, you'll be able to just pour it all in without even measuring. All right. The honey is really great in this recipe. It makes the chicken nice and sticky and gooey. Okay, there we go. So we're going to pour our honey in. All right. I'm going to add a little bit more. It doesn't want to come out of the measuring cup. So there we go. All right. Perfect. We've got our honey. And lastly, we're going to measure out a third cup of balsamic vinegar. All right. So here we go. A third of a cup. Balsamic vinegar. All right, put that in. Oh, just a little bit more. Try not to splash all over the place like I do. I tend to be a messy cook sometimes. I splash everywhere. <laughs> all right, so pour that right into the bag. All right, simple as can be. Now all you're going to do is close up the bag like that, and you're going to just mix it up. You know, if you wanted to, you could take a measuring cup or a bowl and put everything and whisk it in, but why dirty more dishes, right? All right, so pick it up really well. That's it. All right, so I'm going to go put this in the refrigerator for an hour, and I'll be back when it's done marinating, and we'll cook it. See you in a few minutes. Okay, so now the chicken has marinated in the refrigerator for one hour. All right, so what we're going to do is open the bag just like that, be careful not to splash this on yourself. Just dump it right into the pot, just like that. Just into the pot. Marinate and all. All right. All right, you can see that the chicken is in there. All right. So now, Ed loves rice. So I'm going to make some rice for him. So if you want rice, you can make it pot in pot. Take a long-legged trivet. Put it right on top of your chicken. 
take a pan of rice that you've rinsed. All right, put it right in there. That's 12 ounces of rice that I've rinsed. And now I'm going to use 12 ounces of fresh water. You can also use chicken broth if you like. Pour that in, just like that. There we go. All right, I'm going to put a cover on it. It's got holes in it. I love this brand, it's Echovana, because of the holes. So the rice will steam nicely, and the liquid and the juice and the chicken won't fall into the rice and make it all funky looking. All right, and that's it. So now we're going to lock on the lid, just like that. And I'm going to cook this at high pressure for five minutes. All right, so I'm going to hit the uh, pressure cook button. Some models say, say manual and uh, others say pressure cook. And I'm going to change this to five minutes. All right, make sure your pressure valve is turned off to sealing. So you push it back so that it is venting, not off. I meant, I'm not venting, gosh, I'm a shiggy today. Push it back to uh, seal. All right, so the pin is down. So I set the pot at five minutes. We're gonna let it cook. After it beeps, we're going to just wait and do nothing for 10 minutes so that the pressure will release naturally and then we'll slowly re release the rest of the pressure. So as soon as it's cooked, I will let you see what it looks like. Hi, Junie Moon. Are you hungry? Jill, we're back. Oh, hi everyone, we're back. Just cutting up some scallions for the garnish. So it's been 10 minutes. I'm going to release the pressure. There's not much left in it. And as soon as the valve pressure pin drops, I will open it. It's okay, it's now dropped. Okay, here we go. Be careful, there's a lot of steam and water that will come out. We'll put this over here. This is always hard for me, it's getting the pot of rice out. All right, so without burning myself. See if I can grab this. All right. Okay, I got it. All right, so the rice is nice and steamed. We'll take out the trivet. Smells so, so good turn it over there and let me give this a mix okay if you want to thicken the sauce hit cancel which I'm going to do and then uh, hit saute where's that button there it is hit saute okay oh my god it smells I wish we had smell a vision all right so let me take this out okay that beep just means I switched to saute. So look at this. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. Okay. Almost out. Chicken will fall apart a little bit, but it's going to be so juicy and delicious. All right. So. There we go beautiful. We can add some garnish to it. All right, let's check the rice. All right, so we're going to open the pot and you can see the rice is perfectly cooked. You can see that? Perfectly cooked. So I'm going to serve up a little plate now. That's Junie Moon. She's hungry. It's her dinner time. All right, so some rice. And all right, some rice. We'll put some chicken on top, just like this. And I'm going to add some of this lovely ginger and garlicky sauce. Pour it right over it. And a nice bit of scallions. Always add scallions, nice color. I'm gonna hand this off to Ed, I bet he's hungry. There you go, Ed. He'll try it over there. There's your fork. Let us know what you think. So I wanted to let you know that this makes a terrific freezer meal. 
So if you want to cook this for your free or make this for your freezer to cook, what I suggest is get some chicken on sale, divide it into separate food saver bags, and make up a triple or quadruple batch of the marinade, put it into each bag, seal it, and put it in the freezer. So when you're ready to cook, you can take it up the night before and let it defrost in the, in the refrigerator and it will marinate all day. You can even cook it frozen. So uh, the flavor is out of this world. Ed, how is it? It's good. Is it too hot? <laughs> I can take it. Very garlicky, right? And ginger, lots of ginger. Yeah, are these my scallions? Those are, Ed grew scallions. Those are the scallions that I garnished with. I can't wait for you to make this recipe. I know it will be a go-to recipe for you as well. As always, the recipe and step-by-step -step photos are found on my blog, thisoldgal.com. You can always follow me on YouTube, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, and Instagram, as I'm always posting new recipes. Oh, and don't forget to give me a like. Thank you so much for joining me today on In the Kitchen with Jill. Bye. I'll see you all next time.